All right, so you want to boost your very first firebird. And I'm not talking about stealing it. I'm talking about adding a power brake booster to that little hole there in the firewall. That's where the master cylinder brake pedal assembly, and if you've added a brake booster, attaches to the firewall. So as simple as that, bolt it to it, right? Well, for the most part, but a couple little things you might want to know so the brake pedal works right, and you actually get this thing working like it should or as good as it possibly can. And they're not going to tell you this in the direction, so definitely this is worth hanging out for, or if you just want to know how to install it, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to boost our own Firebird here. Here we go. Master cylinder for a disc brake car. Brand new combination valve. Takes care of distribution and everything. You know, keeps the brakes working happy. New power brake booster came with this kit here. Pretty shiny and new and all done up nice. Now here is, this is the original brake pedal mounting bracket and the actual brake pedal itself. Now a couple things to keep in mind. This is the same between power and manual drum or disc. Now they use the same setup. The only thing they change is the pitch of the master cylinder and then the mounting hole that gets used. Manual brake cars ties into this top hole here, which I have a bolt in. I'll explain that here in a minute. And then a power assist car shoots the master cylinder cavern angle. You'll see the cars, the brake booster and the master cylinder are kind of a uh, few degree pitch up towards the hood. Well, that's because we're shooting towards this hole here. And that's all fine and dandy. It changes the geometry because it changes the mechanical effort for the driver because power assist, well, you don't need as much because you got power assist. But the one thing to do though is where the manual brake pedal used to mount, well, they got this little bracket right here. Now, a lot of cars, I'm going to guess this is probably missing. So this is one of the first things you want to take note of or get your hands on or check. If you're adding or have added power brakes, you need this little bracket does a couple things as you can see this is your brake light switch see what it comes in contact with there it hits that without this bracket a couple things are going to happen either the brake pedal never going to disengage the brake light switch got to modify it cut it apart i have no idea i haven't seen it happen but i can only assume there's been some creative repairs for this situation or the other thing that i have seen and i've actually corrected is to get the brake lights to turn off when well, you take the brake pedal take up the slack and you run the brake pedal all the way up against that switch well the problem with that is in your brake pedal is way the heck up here so as a driver you're hitting the brake pedal is here when you go try to hit the gas it's way the heck down here if you can visualize that so if you're going to try to change from the gas to the brake you literally got to take your foot up and step over and stomp on the brake and that's kind of a safety issue just in my opinion i don't like that so really the best thing to do, check for this bracket. If your car has power brakes or has power brakes that have been added, look for this little thing here. So it ties into the bracket. Here's a bolt that ties it to the pedal. It's a little Z-shaped bracket, as you can see. And it just ties onto the brake pedal. And it takes up the gap and makes the brake pedal work. So that's step number one. They're not going to tell you that in the directions. Nowhere does it say, by the way, make sure this is on there. So I'm hoping this helps you out on your build or if you're boosting your first Firebird or even Camaro. Okay, now we got that out of the way. You learned all about that. This comes as the booster assembly. It doesn't come with the link on it. This is actually ties the booster to the brake pedal. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this kind of sort of pre-adjusted before putting it through the firewall because I'm just not quite the contortionist I used to be. And hanging upside down under the dash isn't my favorite place to hang out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just kind of assemble this right here and get the rough adjustment. So this kind of lines up like so. That straddles the pedal, so you got to hit them all there. And put the pedal up. And what the idea here is, get the hole lined up with the pedal. And that's as simple as actually turning this adjustment in and out to get the hole to go. Let's see. About like so. And I am not even in close. Let me run this in. I'm actually running this rod into that shackle or that bracket. And then, there we go. Now there's actually a pin that drops in between there, but I'm really close. That has a whole lot easier to me than climb under the dash. So next thing we're gonna do, we'll get this pedal assembly mounted inside the body here. There we go. Brake pedal assembly, stab it in the dash. You guys might know, say, a little bit of a change in here, but that we're not gonna talk about. And what we're gonna do up in here, those are the four holes. You see the big one in the middle. That's where this is gonna mount up at. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward for the most part. Just stab this thing through the firewall and then there's three studs or mounting nuts here that hold this brake pedal assembly up to the dash now that's also where the steering column mounts so for the time being it's going to take a couple of nuts there and just go ahead and turn them on there hand tight for now and that'll get us started now of course next thing here we're going to get the power brake booster mounted on our new four studs just poked through the firewall and as we do that we got to line up the brake pedal bracket there on the brake pedal as it goes through 
All right, well, here goes nothing. This is pretty self-explanatory for the most part, but get that through the firewall to the center hole and line up the four studs. I'm going to try to snag the brake pedals I slide that through. The advantage of having the fender off the car, it's a whole heck of a lot easier now. Um, now a couple of things to keep in mind, as you have already noticed, the dash is painted a pretty awesome bronze. That's a little custom touch of working on this car, something a little different than the norm. Because most of you are really super, super sharp know, well, they never painted the dash autumn bronze. This car is going to have some little special custom nuances or touches. But the uh, reason I went ahead and painted the dash now is, well, I plan on leaving the brake pedal assembly, brake booster. I'll get the steering column mounted. I'm going to leave that in the car. I have no intentions on taking it back out. Um, with the idea of, since now that it's painted, I don't have to worry about overspray getting in all these items. I kind of like to keep things as clean as possible. It's kind of, the, I guess, the steps to the madness. So if you're keeping tabs, that's the, the reason why I've already done that. And then the reason I'm assembling the car is, well, I need the weight of the car all on the suspension as I set the body gaps and set the body up for doing the final body work. So why put the car together to take it back apart to put it back together? I know it does require a little bit of masking and a little more time during cleanup because all this stuff is pretty, but it can be done that way. And this is how the one man band does it. So I've got that mounted up. I'm gonna go verify I got that on the brake pedal right. Let's go check that out. All right, let's see what we did, how good or bad or I did her. Um, and it looks like I managed to actually get it right. Check that out. The brake pedal is straddling the new rods. So I can actually go ahead and put the pin through these and link them together. So you guys see that or not. Now, at that point, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'll go ahead and tighten up the four nuts there underneath the hood on the firewall side. All right, everything on the inside is good, and that's also really good. Got to tighten up the four nuts here on the firewall. The factory uses a flange nut, but uh, I don't have any of those right now. I have some on order. I may change it later, but if not, the washers and the nuts are acceptable. Uh, I could get that one started. But I'll get these four snugged up, and then we'll get the master cylinder mounted into place. Okay. Now, we're ready for a master cylinder install. Now, check this thing out here. I know I say that a lot. Check this out, but that's what I'm trying to get your attention. This little puck here goes in the back of the master cylinder. You could imagine without this, it rides on that. You go hit the brake pedal, it's going to go whoop right through the middle of that bad boy. And you ain't got no brakes. So I'm not seeing this too many times. Normally this isn't separate on the master zone, but make sure if that's a big hole, uh, make sure you see the little spacers. It's just a chunk of steel, so it's got some weight to it, but the one end is kind of concave to fit the actual push rod. Again, drop that thing into place. Now there is an adjustment or a measurement between here and there. Um, too much of a gap, the squishy brake pedal really low. And too tight, the brakes stay engaged. Now this one's not adjustable. I don't think I've ever adjusted them, but just an FYI for you guys who want to know, there is a measurement for that. But uh, I typically kind of go by the feel of the brake pedal. If we got a problem, then we'll dig into it. But anyway, step one, shove that thing right in there, make sure it stays into place. We'll get this mounted up here on the booster assembly. That's as simple as sliding it into place like that and run down the two nuts here. But got to stack in. All right, here we go. Get down here. There's a little bracket here. This bracket is what supports the brand new, up-to-date, shiny new combination valve. It mounts here on this stud here, kind of facing down towards the ground. This one came with nice new hardware. Now that brake line will come in from the back of that new proportioning valve. All right, that's a start. Next part of our process of getting this brake booster assembly mounted up is the brand new combination valve. Let's get this thing mounted. Go ahead and pull the tape off of my lines. This is what I did originally to keep crud out of the things. Now, it's my thoughts, just my opinion. Now, lines are brittle. They have so much flex where they actually snap. But I would suggest while this thing's out in outer space, just get them started. Um, it's I, I, This is just my technique. Now, you do what you want with that information. But I like to go ahead and see about getting these things kind of hand tightened to, to begin with. That way... When I wrestle it into place, hopefully it all goes together. So, there it is. Well, maybe. Let me get it down here. Oh, there you go. Get a better view. I can see what the heck I'm doing. Now again, I'm not cranking those down tight yet. And these are the for the front. This is for the passenger side. And uh, this here is for the, that's the driver's side, that's the passenger side. This here shoots to the rear of the car for the rear brakes. 
It's a quarter inch line, so it's a little heavier. Okay. It actually looks pretty good. How far off are we here? Actually, it's pretty close. Um, now these two are self-explanatory. They tie into the master cylinder. So they're all started. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to pop these out here. Same thing. That helps keep the crud and dirt out. Yikes, that's kind of bit off. Um, again, all the lines mounted up. Yeah, no bump. Okay. Now the mass is still is loose. And then of course these lines are all still loose. I'm just gonna get them all hand started. Huh, okay. That one's, look at this, a little bit off. Um, maybe we see a little twist maybe. Or how far off are these? This is probably about the worst part about it, getting this thing all going. Let's maybe start that. Again, leaving everything loose for adjustment. Oh, that's gotta come. Now, how in the heck? Closer, but just a little shy. Advantage of leaving the master cylinder loose here. Now again, get these all hand started. You don't want to force these threads. They're pretty, pretty, uh, we'd say fragile. Uh, we get them all started. That's not square. Okay, they're all started nice and square. What I would probably do now is just start tightening them all up one at a time until everything is snugged up. Hey, so there you have it. We have successfully boosted a Firebird. Not necessarily gone in 60 seconds fast, but pretty quick, I feel. Now, these lines all need a little bit of massaging, as you saw, bending them around. There's different ideas, toss techniques. I like to get them all hand started and trying to force one really into place. Kind of get them all going and just kind of get it to go. You saw how it went. Real time. Not too difficult to do. Now, of course, next thing here, bleeding the brakes out, filling it full of brake fluid. Some people like to bench bleed. Your opinion, your thoughts, however you want to do it. It's how you like to build a car. The only thing I'm doing here, we call it the right way, the wrong way, and the VVG way. And you do with the information as you see fit. Uh, I just like to bleed them a little differently. Maybe I'll do a video on it. I don't know. That's what it comes into. You guys have any questions how we do things here? Hit me up in the comments. I love doing videos, helping you out on your journey because this brake light switch thing, especially that's probably the biggest tip I want you to take away from this little uh, process here, the brake light switch bracket. That's always missing, never on there. If you do a power brake upgrade, it doesn't come with the kit. You have to buy it or find it or make it separately. And ask me how I learned this many years ago, but uh, I goobered up one. I've never forgotten that. But I want to share it with you to save you some headaches and keep you happy with your car driving, because that's the goal. We're in a community here of Firebirds, building Firebirds. I got my buddy Louie in Pennsylvania, Brian in Arizona. I got Shaggy's Car Shop. He's got a 69 Firebird, put a big Cadillac motor, a 472, I believe, with a 6 b behind it. It's going to definitely be a pretty good runner. He's going to be getting it back from the body shop real soon, so you guys get a chance to check out his channel, too. Some pretty cool things going on there. I mean, I'm rambling, having some fun. I did a brake video instead of some more sheet metal work because I'm out of shielding gas. I'm having a hard time finding a refill bottle for that thing here on the weekend. Nothing is open. I typically go to Tractor Supply. They are all out. Went to six different Indiana locations and burned up several hours of playtime trying to get that done. So hopefully this week I'll get the bottle fill. We'll work on maybe the driver's side fender. It's not nearly as bad as the passenger side. Or maybe do a video on who knows what. Plenty of work. Plenty of pro uh, projects yet to do here on the old Great Pumpkin. Hope you guys have enjoyed or found what we're doing here helpful or useful. And, of course, again, any questions, hit me up in the comments. Love to help you out with those things. So 
Nonetheless, enough of this. I'll find the next project, grab the camera, and I hope to see you guys then.